Peter Hewitt, La Artistina. I've got a new book review for you today. Now this book is one that I ordered way back in February as soon as I knew that it was going to come on the market. I ordered it through the book depository in the UK and I've been watching very jealous of all the people in the US who have got this book earlier and been colouring it in and thinking can't wait to see this. I don't want to see any spoilers because I love Kirby's work. Anyway, it finally arrived. Mythomorphia by Kirby Rosans. Now this is reportedly going to be his last book and a bit sad about that but then when I think of all the colouring I've yet to do in his other two books and including this one now I realise that I'm going to be colouring till I'm 90 anyway in his books. We'll have a look through Mythomorphia. As usual I have done a few pages beforehand uh, coloured in so I can show you how the paper responds and you know give you some ideas about how to go about your own colouring. Now this is called Mythomorphia Mythomorphia, an extreme colouring and search challenge. So we'll pop inside, it's the same size as the other two books in his series, Anamorphia and um, Imagimorphia. Okay, let's open up and see. You've got a lovely red inside cover and um, the first page uh, displays part of the picture that you will see later on in the book as a double page spread. Now the first page in this copy which is printed by Lomart is kind of stuck to the uh, the cover a little bit it's just the way that they've um, put the book together so if you print if you color in you're just going to have to fold it down a little bit anyway moving through this is gorgeous lovely double page spread uh, where you put your your name the, I love this because this is a picture that doesn't appear anywhere else in the book this is a picture that's been created simply as this uh, nameplate page and I, I love it I'm um, seeing a couple of these done already and uh, the, the potential is enormous for um, the different sorts of colors and styles that you could color this in now the paper is quite thick there's a little fine tooth to it I have um, tried it with several types of pencils. It does take the pencils well, but I find that with some pencils you can't do as much layering as you would like on this paper. Certainly if I compare the paper to say The Enchanted Forest or, or many of that series, that paper uh, layers better with pencils. I find this paper is better with softer pencils such as the um, Prismacolors or the Colleen's or the Lyra's. I've used um, Faber-Castell Polychromis in this as well well and they go down well but I find they won't layer as thickly as many layers as I would like to but they're still layer enough that it's quite workable this is nice with all the leaves you go mad coloring all this as autumn leaves or spring leaves and there's a few dragonflies and such flying around in it and then you come to the first page now this book I find is mostly double page spread so if you're a lover of the double page spread like I am you're going to have a ball in this book You've got the um, little hidden uh, items to find as well and there's a place at the back of the book which tells you all the items and where they are. This one's gorgeous, this is a Hydra. Uh, we had a lot of fun actually, my son and I, going through this book and naming all the creatures without looking at them at the back and coming up with the names. My son Chayton is very much into mythology, particularly um, Greek mythology and um, Nordic mythology. Uh, this is a hippogriffin. It's not actually a griffin because it's got the um, the hooves of a horse. And if you watch the Harry Potter series or read the books, you'll know that this particular combination of animals is a hippogriffin. Then you've got a uh, well. In Singapore, it's called a merlion, and it's actually the um, the national symbol of Singapore. If you go to Singapore you'll find on the harbour they've got a statue of one of these. I think they're called something different in this book so um, you'd have to check on the back for it. Here is a seahorse with an actual horse looking head and front hooves. A stag with these antlers full of leaves. Sort of like a combination of a stag and a tree. Oh, this is gorgeous this picture it's gnomes gnomes and toadstools if you love um, coloring in mushrooms and toadstools you're gonna have a ball here here's one a couple of single page pictures yeah, I won't go to the back and name them or you can uh, have a look when you um, read the book I uh, I thought it was an ant um, but then I'm thinking of um, Lord of the Rings there but it's actually got a different name I can't think of what that one's called and this guy here 
rabbit with the antlers. Uh, this is a mythological creature as well. Can't bring the name to mind. If you find any of the names, well, actually, you don't have to because the names are all in the back of the book. But um, if you if you go through the book and just test yourself and see how many of them you can actually name, it's kind of fun. The other thing you'll see about this book is there's less of the little doodle creatures that he crowds the page with and more of doodles that are repeating things like these are all the flowers, just a few insects and odd things thrown in and um, there's less of all the little crazy doodle, doodle people. So I find the pictures are more cohesive as pictures that way. Here's a double page spread with two pegasi. This would be lovely, I've seen these ones done in colours of My Little Pony. Um, pictures or, or a black pegasi and a white pegasi or a sun pegasi and uh, a moon pegasi. So I had a lot of fun with that one. This is a Chinese dragon. Lots of doodling in this one. This looks very complicated Kirby's work but once you start breaking down and colouring it in everything starts making sense. Now these are two trolls, I think this is a mountain troll and uh, or a goblin, mountain goblin or mountain troll. This one looks like a, a tree troll or something. This is a manticore. Very little um, doodling, these large white space here so you can get creative with the background using pastels or, or your pencils and, and fill it in with something or you could just leave it blank. There's a giant octopus taking down a tall ship. There's a sandman. This is another, I don't quite know the name of this mythological creature. But again, it could be in the back of the book. This looks gorgeous. This is some elves in a woodland scene. This is actually one of the first ones I was thinking I would do first, but I changed my mind. This one I'm definitely going to be doing next because my son Chasen loves foxes so this is going to be this is a nine tail fox uh, it's called a kitsune and it's from Japanese mythology then I thought this was an orc but I play World of Warcraft so I, I look at that and see orc but it's not actually an orc it's a no I'm not gonna look you guys can have a look when you get in the book this Oh dear me now, I actually posted a question up asking people what this particular creature was and I couldn't think of what it was called. And I still can't think of what it's called, but um, anyway. Now this is my first double page spread complete. This took me about a week but I've been constantly working on it. I've got a few little instructional videos that are in post-production at present on how to colour in the trees and how I coloured in the snow so they're going to be very short videos only about 10-15 um, minutes long just to concentrate on um, various little aspects of the picture if you like more of those types of videos do let me know in the comment I'm happy to do just spot videos um, concentrating on just one element how to colour it I had a lot of fun with this as you can see I went mad with the white gel pen I've also put some Winker Stella on there. I'll show you what that is. That's this little Winker Stella brush. It's a brush tip and it's got lots of sparklies in it. And I actually coloured in her dress using that. It's um, difficult to see, but um, oh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick up the sparkly sheen. I also put some on the, the castle over there as well. This was great fun. I love colouring with the blues. I've been doing so much colouring with reds and orange at present. It was great to have a break. You know, I just got a colour fatigue, I think, with the reds and oranges. Anyway, we have got here um, a sea turtle with uh, an island on its back. Another one from Asian mythology. This is kind of cool. I love this one. This is one of the first ones I've seen actually on Facebook completely done and it, it looked glorious so this one's this one's on my to-do list as well. You got a werewolf, a lot of bats. Again he's staying uh, in with the theme when he does all his doodles so the, the doodles are full of crows and bats. And a centaur here again with this um, tree theme like he's leaping out of the tree or leaping out of being a tree into a centaur. Oh, that side. Okay and there you have a water dragon and a fire dragon. So you've got the, the bluey tones here and the reddy tones there for contrast. There's a 
Sphinx. And here's a proper griffin. He's the guy that you saw on the front cover, only he's in the reverse position. You only see the first half of him. Yeah, you can see he's a proper griffin because he's got the lion's feet instead of the horse feet. There's a minotaur from Crete mythology and a phoenix. Now this is a Gorgon. We, my son and I looked at it and said, oh, it's Medusa. But of course, Medusa is the name of a maiden who was turned into a Gorgon by a spiteful god. So this creature with the snake's head and the woman's sort of body and the, I think the lower part of her body is, is a great big snake as well, a great big serpent, is actually a Gorgon. And quite lovely. It's a satyr, I think, coming out of the tree. And another one, I think, from Asian mythology, and I don't know the name of it, but geez, doesn't that look nice? This is another one I really want to colour as well. A Yeti. You saw a couple of those in that snow scene that I finished. Anubis, the jackal headed god who weighed the souls of the dead to decide whether they were going to be um, go to paradise or be condemned. I remember the souls had to be as light as a feather. If they weren't as light as a feather, then it was a person who had done things that um, had angered the gods and they were then condemned. Okay, and there's a giant serpent from mythology as well. Um, not sure which serpent that one is. Okay. This is like an arachnoid monster. Um, saw them a lot. Crossbreeds bred from drow elves and spiders if you follow that um, Dungeons and Dragons mythology. Okay, and a serpent woman. Okay, now this is called a... Oh dear, I'm racking my brains. I should have made a little list of all the answers here and then I'd sound really clever. Uh, I think it's called a Poe Dog and they're usually um, paired uh, and stand at the doors of, uh, of um, Chinese uh, buildings. Uh, you know which one's the boy and which one's the girl because the boy has a ball under his foot and the girl, the female, has a puppy with her. So this is definitely a boy. She, he hasn't got his, his female with him. But if you see them outside of Chinese buildings, that's what they are and they're guardians. Here's some goblins obviously warlike goblins with all the um, weaponry around them. This is a fairy land, absolutely gorgeous. I think I will definitely do some sort of lovely kind of pastel background for this, but I'll see what I end up doing when I do it. Oh, I love the fox, I didn't notice that. It's a little fox sort of wandering around behind the fairy there. This is a cockatrice is looks like it's part rooster part serpent I think they were the ones if they look at you they could turn you to stone the same as the gorgons can now here's another one that I've colored this is a harpy and of course as soon as I saw her when I opened the book I knew she would be the first one to color because you may already know that my muse my art muse is a harpy called uh, Myra and she's the one that sort of inspires me to to work you know she's kind of like a little little voice in my head telling me what to do at times geez I sound a bit mad there don't I anyway as soon as I saw this one I knew she was the first one I was going to color and she took a long time to tell me what color her feathers were but um, we eventually worked it out once I did the background sometimes you like I plan my the colors of my drawings but sometimes I'm not quite sure about one or two colors and I Fill, fill the picture in first and then once it's done, the, the, the bits that I do know, they tell me uh, what's missing and then I know what colour to add. It's kind of the way that my arty mind works. Now this is a siren calling the uh, poor sailors down to their deaths. A unicorn with a mane of roses, what a gorgeous idea. And this one, we thought it might have been the Yormungandra from North Mythology. And it's actually a child of um, Loki that had um, was thrown into the sea. And this, the rise of this creature would spell the Ragnaros, which is the end of the world. And a 
ghoul and cyclops and cerberus the three-headed hound that guards um hell mermaid and a merman They're cool with all the bubbles and finally a dragon and here we have uh, Kirby's signature doodles appearing um, in this book, the only place that you will find them. And there are all the things you need to um, find when you're colouring in. Uh, I like to sort of tick them off as I find them. It's kind of a fun little side game while you're colouring. There's more of them. And here is the answers and they also have, as I said, the names of all the creatures that you'll find in there. If I go to the back of the book, here is where I test all my colours and I found everything that I tried sort of works quite well. It's not the best paper in the world for blending but it's it's pretty good and um, even the uh, ink tents I found down here worked well without any bleed through. So you can give your ink tents a go as well, just don't get too heavy with the water. Alright, and there's these other two past books on this nice red back cover. And that is it for this video review. I love this book. I'm a bit sad it's going to be Kirby's last one, but at the same time, how much colouring? It's going to take me years to finish this book, considering all the other books I've got, and possibly you have as well. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough, and I will join you again next time. And until then, happy colouring! enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on and until next time happy colouring!